If someone asks you to solve an equation, what exactly is it that you're looking for? You might say a solution, but what does that really mean? A solution is just any input value that would result in your output value being zero. Typically, if we think about a equation with two variables, your input value is represented by the x value and your output value is represented by the y value. So what we're looking for are any values of x that would result in our y value being zero. However, if you have an equation that's just in terms of a single variable, basically what that means is whatever value you find when you isolate your variable would be your solution. So let's take a look at how we can solve some different examples of equations. The first equation I want to look at is one like this. So this is a problem that you would have seen probably in Algebra 1. And to solve this, what we need to do is try and isolate our variable. So first we're going to distribute the 3 through and the 5 through to our quantities respectively. So we'll get 3x minus 6 equals 5x minus 5. Uh, then I'm going to get the x's on the left and my constants on the right. So I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides and I'm going to add 6 to both sides. So this is going to cause the 5x's to cancel and the 6x's, or sorry, the 6's to cancel and will leave us with negative 2x equals 1. The last step is to divide by negative 2. So we get that x equals negative 1 half. So if you were to check this, uh, you would take this negative 1 half and you could plug it in. And what it would result in is the left side equaling the right. Or if we got everything on one side, you would see that this entire equation would equal 0. It would mean our output value is 0. So let's take a look at another example. For this example, we're given a quadratic, 3x squared minus 13x equals 10. So this is one where we're going to actually make this equation equal to 0 so that we can solve. So we need to move this 10 to the left side by subtracting it. And so we will have 3x squared minus 13x minus 10 equals 0. So here you can see that our output value is looking to be zero. We need to figure out what values of x make this true. And that's just the definition of what a solution is. So now to solve this, you have a few methods you could use, but I'm gonna first try factoring. That's usually what I like to try first anytime I have some sort of quadratic. You could use quadratic formula, um, but I think factoring is often easier. So to factor this, we take the 3 and the negative 10 and take their product, get negative 30. Uh, so we're looking for two numbers that multiply to be negative 30 and add to be negative 13. So factors of negative 30 uh, would be negative 15 and positive 2, because negative 15 plus 2 is negative 13, negative 15 times 2 is negative 30. So now we rewrite this equation up here using those two numbers. So 3x squared minus 15x plus 2x minus 10 equals 0. So this is just this exact same equation, only rewriting this middle term using these two numbers, right? Because negative 15x plus 2x is negative 13x. And now we split these and factor. So the greatest common factor of these two terms is 3x. So we get 3x times x minus 5. And the greatest common factor of these two terms is a 2, so positive 2 x minus, times x minus 5 equals 0. Now we have a common factor of x minus 5, so we can factor that out. And then what we're left with is the factor of 3x plus 2. And then all of this equals 0. So now we use the zero product property. So we take each of these pieces and set them equal to 0. And those will give us the two values that uh, make our original equation equal to 0. So x minus 5 equals 0. So that just means that x is 5. And 3x plus 2 equals 0. That means that x is negative 2 thirds. So those are the two solutions to this equation. Our last uh, equation is a little trickier because our variable now is in the denominator. So anytime you have fractions and you're trying to solve an equation, usually I try and get rid of our fractions altogether. Whether there's variables or just numbers, I usually try and get rid of my fractions. To do that, what you want to do is look at the common denominators of all of your terms in your equation. 
So the common denominator for this whole thing would be 3x. Um, so our common denominator is 3x. Now, why do we need the common denominator? Well, if we multiply both sides of our equation by 3x, what that's going to do is it's going to get rid of our fractions. So multiply by 3x over 1 on both sides, and we will see what happens. So distribute this in. We get 3x times 2, that's 6x. 1 times 3x is 3x. 3x times negative 6, that's negative 18x over x. And then 2 times 3x is 6x. Uh, 6x divided by 3x, that's just 2. Negative 18x divided by x is negative 18 equals 6x. 2 minus 18 is negative 16. Uh, do your division, divide by 6. Reduce your fraction, and we get that negative 8 thirds is equal to x. So the value of x is negative 8 thirds. Now, really, for all of your equations, you really should check your solutions um, because a solution is only a valid solution if it's in the domain of your function. Um, and we know that for this, we can't have 0 in our denominator. So if your value turned out to be something that would make your denominator 0, it would not be a valid solution. It would be something called an extraneous solution. But negative 8 thirds is not going to make either of these denominators 0, so it is a valid solution.